Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome. And uh, thanks for, again for joining my partner, John Coleman. And hola. Very, hola, yeah. And our very <laughs> special guest, Bill Jordan. And what are we going to discuss today, guys? Bienvenidos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, guten Tag, mein Freund. Yeah. Your Freund. Ah. Mein Freund. Uh, Freunden, uh, Freunden, Freunden, Freunden. Freunden, okay. Uh, all I know is, uh, uh, tres cervezas, por favor. Okay. <laughs> cerveza <laughs> frío. Remember, this, frío. Is, this is not a fa family channel, but we do have standards. Low, yeah. but standards. We Very low that. standards. Yeah. So, Bill, I was, re I was trying what little Spanish I know because uh, the first hurricane of the season, which happened weeks and weeks ago, yeah. was named uh, is is the Isaias or something like that. I say Isaiah. I say but Julio it's, it's Iglesias. A Spanish name. I could never I could never pronounce it. Yeah. I, so that's thankfully, why it was in it. It was it came and went. Yeah. And I did do some damage, um, and I believe there were a few fatalities. Um, sorry to say, but. Uh, it it was one of those ones that it was a it was a fast mover and got on got on down the road. So uh, well, you're in you're in um, Raleigh, which is inland by what? Uh, not even a hundred miles, is it? Well, yeah, a little over that. It takes us. Uh, it'll take a straight shot to the beach to like say Wilmington. It's a two hour drive. Yeah. So so uh, you you even though you're in Hurricane Alley. Does Raleigh get the the brunt of these hurricanes? It's really we have we're going to have very heavy rain. Uh, years ago, I forget what year there was a Hurricane Fran that stayed a hurricane and went over Raleigh uh, and did massive amounts of damage. So I was from the old school that once it left the coast, I thought it wasn't a hurricane anymore. He just had a big thunderstorm. But I was I was still uh, doing morning radio at the time, and I drove in that morning during the eye of the of the hurricane. I thought, man, it's just as calm. What's this storm everybody's talking about? <laughs> you know, and I drove in, and once I got in, the the eye cleared. We hit the other side, knocked the power out at the station, and I mean, we were without power for days in this area. Yeah. So it can be, yeah, it can stay a hurricane even when it gets in inland. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it seems like the southeast gets the brunt of the hurricanes. Right. Uh, coming up from the Caribbean or Don't wherever. Don't you get cyclones as well? We don't call them cyclones. Cyclones. I mean, we get we get tornadoes, but we don't. Call I think them it's the, in the Pacific. They're cyclones. Uh, in the yeah. Atlantic, they're um, uh, hurricanes. I'm trying to but, be more. I'm trying to be more worldly with our. Uh, oh, okay. All right. You are very bicoastal. If I, I am uh, bicoastal. Yeah, but uh, you know, bring up cyclones and stuff. Um, there's really no place in the country. We, you know, we our big thing in Southern California is earthquakes. Not just Southern California. North but... Carolina had one a few years. Uh, no kidding. Years no kidding. Yep. Really. Five point five point one on the Richter scale. Yeah. Well, you, you just don't think of a hurricane. I mean, a uh, earthquake in the southeast. You think of it in the west or the southwest. And and right. of course, there's. You think of the Midwest. You think of flooding. Every river in the country floods sooner or later somewhere. Um, poor New Orleans. I always think of them. You know, right. they really got hit with Katrina. Right. But there's right. no place in the country that doesn't have its natural disasters that you have to worry about. Mm. Or is there? I can't think of any place. Well, I, I can't think of anywhere. I mean, maybe, maybe, I, you know, you know, I don't hear of any natural. Well, I take that back. Certainly, there's tornadoes when you say something like uh, the Midwest. Uh, you know, Kansas, obviously. I mean, Wizard of Oz for crying out loud, right? right. It's a tornado, right? So, sure. uh, yeah, I think natural, natural disasters and natural, you know, weather occurrences, whether it be earthquakes or whatever. That's not weather, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but there's but only so much that we can do about it. That's because it is natural. It's not. I have know. to tell you one of the things, though, uh, that of all the places, uh, and I've traveled extensively throughout the United States. Uh, I had uh, national uh, and North American territories. So I was in every city in just about every condition. Um, and even though I grew up in the Northeast and I love it there, I love uh, having snowstorms and things like that. Literally going to and from work for three or four weeks after a winter storm, your life is at risk uh, on uh, the streets that keep getting frozen over. Yeah. Uh, all the driving out here are the earthquakes and as disastrous as some of them are. And look, if, if you're personally impacted by your house being uh, damaged or somebody getting seriously hurt, then it's, it's that kind of tragedy for most people. An earthquake, it happens. 
and within a minute or two, you know that you're in trouble. And if and the vast majority of people just return to work. So it was an event, and people right. talk about it, and you move on. Uh, I know that um, uh, in, in the Pacific Northwest, they have black ice, uh, which uh, you can't even see on the road, and that's dangerous. And I seem to remember that uh, in your neck of the woods, every so often you'll have a snowstorm and since, uh, with ice and things like that, and you guys are not used to that. That really puts you out of commission for a while, doesn't it? It really can. And the dangerous part is we also get that uh, black ice that you don't really see it. It may just look damp or something. And man, it, it wreaks havoc because, uh, you know, four wheel drive or whatever, it just helps you get to the ditch twice as fast. Uh, uh, snow, uh, I now enjoy that I'm out of the radio business. It used to be if a snowflake was in the forecast, I had to go stay in some flea bag hotel so that I could walk into the radio station if need be. Because, hey, at the time I was essential personnel. What can I tell you? Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, now I enjoy uh, not having to go anywhere. So when the forecast is snow, hey man, I just make sure we're stocked up on stuff and we're prepped with flashlights and you know candles and all that stuff and got plenty of food and got charcoal so we could cook out on the grill if we need to, uh, get prepped and then man, bring the snow on and snow me in for a few days. I don't have to go anywhere, fine by me. But you know, all of this stuff, the natural disasters to an extent, but the other things like when the storms come through, are we prepared? I mean, we've always got our flashlights, like I say, and candles. We make sure we've got enough water. We fill our bathtubs because we're on a community well. If we lose power, then you can't flush and stuff like that. So we, we try to collect water as best we can. It's a great line. Uh, again, as somebody else said it far smarter than I am, when the time to perform arrives, the time to prepare has passed. Yeah, good you advice. Can't, you know, so we make sure our cars are, are topped off with gas. If you yeah. if your only means of communication now is your cell phone, that cell phone's gonna die. You've got no power. The only way you're gonna be able to charge it probably is with a car charger. And you need to have gas to run your car. So it's little things like that 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 doesn't seem like a big deal to many people, but for me, man, and, and when the snow and ice does come, I've got maybe maybe rock salt or whatever out in the garage or ice melt, something that helps me if I've got to get out. Uh, bags of kitty litter if you need traction. You know, you put that under your tires. Uh, I, I, my dad was a World War II combat veteran, so I was kind of raised in a preparedness mindset. Have it ready. Prevention is worth the pound of cure, you know. So, That's how yeah, I and, Good, John. I was going to say, you know, there's no place, whatever your proclivity for disaster is in your area of the country, they do tend to be seasonal. I mean, flooding always happens in the spring. It doesn't happen in the winter. Um, earthquakes seem to have a season. They talk about earthquake season, even though technically I don't think it exists. Hmm. Right. Um, and, and preparation is the same thing. You kind of know when this stuff is going to happen, if it's going to happen, and you can be prepared. There's no reason you can't have that stuff laying around before you need it. Sure, sure. And then, you know, uh, there's also everyday kind of emergencies that people need to be thinking about. We had friends over last, uh, we have friends over more often, but with COVID, it definitely has put a cramp on things. But last fall, I mean, I, I, I remember this because we had them over for a brunch a Sunday morning. We had brunch and my wife said, hey, Bill, there's a fire in the, in the oven. And I thought she was kidding. She wasn't. But we had a little shake them up can of fire extinguisher under the sink and Put the fire out. Do you have a fire extinguisher handy? Do you know where it is? I had forgotten we even had one. She had to tell me where it was. She could have done it, but you know, that kind of thing. Um, do you have jumper cables in your car? And something I've even been thinking about um, lately and I haven't got it and they're like 30 bucks and for a good one. And that is as scary as it sounds, a tourniquet. Yes. You know, yes. do you have tourniquets in your car? Yeah. You know, if you get in a car wreck and you get an arterial bleed because something has cut you out, you might want to, you know, it can save your life or someone else's. Yeah. And have it someplace where you can reach it. It doesn't do you any good in the trunk if you get in a wreck and need it. Right. And and I think, you know, all of these things that you might need for an emergency situation, you got to have them in the right place. Exactly. You can't have them in the garage. Right. I think of uh, when we lived in a two-story house. Uh, fire was a concern and we didn't have balconies or anything on the second floor. You needed to have an emergency ladder you could throw out the window. Well, if you keep it in the garage, 
it's not going to do you any good. Exactly. You know? Well, unless you can get to the garage before you use it, and then before you, you start the fire. Thanks, Art. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good planning. But I have a one question for you, uh, Bill. Since you are uh, in uh, a Hurricane Tropical Storm Alley, you can certainly expect, even if it never happens in the particular season, two or three a year of uh, significant storms come your way with a significant amount of wind. Uh, where you live, have you put on some, you see people board up their windows and things like that. Do you have storm shutters that you just can close and, and protect the windows or? I don't know if anybody who's got it? that. I don't know who's anybody who's got that here, like in the Raleigh area, but certainly down on the coast, a lot of the properties down there, mm -hmm. either people are down there screwing planks of plywood right. or they've got the storm shutters. We have rented vacation property down along the Crystal Coast of North Carolina, uh, where they've just got these big metal shutters and they just pull them out, yeah. lock them down, and then they're good to go. Yeah, great. Hey, uh, one last word for everybody because we we're talking about preparation. And, and we just touched on it a second ago. I, uh, probably the most important preparation is CPR and being able to deal with wounds and, uh, you know, uh, people getting hurt, uh, sure. blood, tourniquet, that kind yep. of thing. Great training, and it's real simple stuff, but if you don't know it, you can't use it. So I recommend exactly. that everybody get some uh, emergency medical training. CPR kind of stuff. And, 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 I, and that's a good reminder. And I need to do that because that is, if you were to ask me, what is your biggest fear? I would probably have to say, well, one, flying monkeys, right? Because I mean, yeah. it's flying monkeys. Of but close number two is having someone close to me, a loved one, friend, family member in medical trouble, and I cannot help them. Yeah. You, that, unless they that, need that a tourniquet. Does scare me. Unless they need a tourniquet. Okay, well, but, but if they're not in your car, they're screwed. Well, you know, but I mean, if somebody's having a heart attack, yeah, I want to yeah. know CPR. Right. You know? Right. Well, the Heimlich maneuver. There you go. Okay. Yep, another one, yeah. Okay, go another thing about being prepared, and perhaps you can, uh, uh, Bill, you were probably uh, uniquely uh, able to help us with that. If somebody needed a good, sturdy cup to drink their water, <laughs> chocolate water, how could yeah. they... How could they possibly? Where, Bill, uh, where could they possibly get, get a, a cup? good, sturdy where cup? Would there be, if mug. there was only a thing called the internet, if there was only some place that you could click a couple of buttons and buy something and it came to your door. What would they? Uh, yes. What would be? What would they say if they could click a couple of buttons? They would say, "Zowie, uh, look what I found." <laughs> www.zowie.com. No, they would not say that, but no, it was, no, yeah, BillJordanEmbraceTheBoom.com. BillJordanEmbraceTheBoom.com. This is a 15-ounce mug, good for anything you want to put in it. It'll hold 15 ounces, hot, cold, whatever, um, and it's a great conversation starter. My idea for this is for baby boomers. I, I wanted it big letters, so you don't need your reading glasses to know which mug you're in. And it's it faces you so that it reminds you to live your best life where we are now as baby boomers. And maybe start a conversation with the person across the table from you. May ask, hey, what's this Embrace the Boom thing all about? And you can kind of spread the, the good news of embracing the boom and living our best life. So Bill Jordan, EmbraceTheBoom.com. The mugs are 20 bucks, kind of pricey, but... Believe it or not, there's a lot of overhead to getting these things out because I pay for the shipping, uh, the postage, the boxes, and all that other stuff. So and there's they, not a whole yeah. lot of there's not a whole lot of uh, money to be made on that. I'm just trying to spread the news, and if I can encourage people to live their best life if they so choose, then that's what it's there for. And also at BillJordanEmbraceTheBoom.com are direct links to my 15 slash 16 practices that if you practice them, when I practice them. I tend to have a better life. And that is just from my perspective, not trying to sell you on that. I just, it works for me. And I would, I just want to share it with you and maybe it'll help you. Well, as, as uh, I uh, uh, admonish my, uh, uh, our audience to do is to embrace Bill Jordan. Here, here. Well, here, here. Hey, Bill, thanks a lot. We'll see you again soon. Thanks guys. And until, until we see each other again, I remind you to live your life Forget your age and embrace the boom. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.